Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Cannabis Review. I'm delighted to be joined on this episode by a real powerhouse of the cannabis industry, George Jage, who's the co-founder and CEO of Jage Media. So Jage Media produces MJ Unpacked, which is a leading CBG consumer packaged goods trade show. And they also publish MJ Brand Insights, which provides up to minute industry intelligence and in-depth research. George also served as the CEO of Dope Media and led its acquisition of High Times. So we're uh, Delighted to have you on the show, George. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, and thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Great to have you on. So I'm going to basically start off with the first kind of question that I had. You basically saw, oversaw the, the, the acquisition of High Times. What makes a good cannabis acquisition in the media space, in your opinion? In, in what makes it a good space in Europe or in just in the media space in general? The media space in general, is it consumer content? Is it the demand yeah, for product or this? Yeah. And I, so to give a little background, Owen, you know, I've been doing trade shows for about 30 years, mostly focused on business to business. Um, when I came in the cannabis space, I basically took over as the president of MJ BizCon and MJ Biz Daily, which was a B2B and became the largest one under my uh, tenure. Um, after I left there, though, I had an opportunity to kind of step in the consumer media space. And Dope Magazine had built a really phenomenal brand. Um, except for the fact that I don't know if anybody had figured out the consumer media model in the U.S. yet. Um, there was a lot of assets out there with a lot of hope and promise of becoming profitable and sustainable. Um, unfortunately, you know, when, when I stepped into the, the opportunity Dope Magazine, um, we really needed to raise some more money and there wasn't a lot of capital out there. We had looked at a couple of different acquisition opportunities. Um, had a deal done with a different company that kind of changed their mind at the last minute. And High Times was a good fit for us. Um, and they were looking to make a number of acquisitions and really kind of reinvigorate the High Times brand that had a lot of legacy support in the industry and really kind of make it, um, you know, probably one of the most recognizable cannabis brands um, in the U.S. Um, you know, after that acquisition, I had left uh, uh, my tenure at Dope slash High Times. Um, I just... I, I think that the cannabis, the, the consumer media space in cannabis is, is challenging. Um, there's a lack of really, I think, some meaningful events out there that can really, um, you know, engage with consumers for allow them to explore the category. Um, you know, almost every one of these media companies has, you know, a number of different channels. They have print, they have digital, they have events. Um, you know, and I'm excited. I, I just talked to um, uh, Rama Mayo the other day and um, you know, they just held their first Green Street Festival out in Los Angeles, um, really as as a bridge to from the, the business to business side to the consumer. Um, Green Street owns a building in Los Angeles that um, hosts a kind of a, a shared co-working space, as well as a number of brands that utilize that as kind of a, a California outpost. Um, and the festival is really designed to allow people to engage the category and kind of discover the new form factors that are coming out. It's it's such a fast and, and rapidly changing category, Owen. Um, so, you know, in the media space, so again, um, you know, there's there's been a lot of consumer media assets. I just don't know if anybody's figured out the magic formula to make it sustainable. No, I, I think you're dead right there. I think the first wave of information had to be B2B because everybody needed to understand the information of how to create the laws, accounts, and all the nuances that go with the business side of thing. But I think you're starting to see consolidation of a number of brands such as Cookies. You've got a couple of uh, pl platforms over here. And I think it's starting to switch now towards, hold on a minute, we want to start capturing the consumer's attention now because that's who we're actually all trying to sell the brands to. Yeah, and 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 this is kind of this the kind of segues really close into why we launched MJ Unpacked, and I want to kind of circle back on the consumer, which is really the most important. They're they're really the hero in the journey, right? Um, you know, we when you say that that B two B had to be the first, and and when I took over at MJ BizCon, um, at the time they did a twenty tabletop trade show at a, a racetrack because there wasn't really a lot of venues saying, "Hey, come on in and have a cannabis event." It was kind of scary. There was a lot of stigma associated with it. Um, there was a lot of concern around, you know, what kind of behavior would happen at these events. Um, but they were able to successfully hold a couple of very small conferences and I was able to come in and help them scale. But the only way that you could do an event back then was really to have a supply side event. So it was, you know, the, the people who were acquiring the licenses, trying to figure out what does a retail store look like? What does a cultivation operation look like? And so, you know, it was extraction equipment, it was lighting technology, you know, lighting, it was, POS technology it was label makers and 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 light bulbs and 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 there was a number of events that kind of all of a sudden popped onto the radar 
then there was this huge surge of supply side events. But at the end of the day, let's let's be real. C- cannabis is a consumer packaged goods, very much like alcohol. Um, you know, going to get a Guinness or you're going to get a cookies right um, at, at your local pub, hopefully someday down the road in Ireland. Um, and and they're really, you know, if you look at on the business to business side of the media space, usually the most powerful and important trade show in the CPG industries is a brand or retail focus show. And there did one didn't exist because we don't have a national market here in the United States because of the complex legal system that's kind of bifurcated between state and federal law. Um, but our goal was really is like, let's, let's be honest, like the brand and the retailer are the last kind of interchange and they kind of have a shared responsibility to win over that consumer of creating a safe and friendly and educational retail environment that a consumer can come in and explore a category. Many people maybe never have used cannabis before, or they maybe haven't used it for a couple of decades. Um, and to reintroduce them to the category. And then the brand has to create a product that's tested, it's trusted, it's transparent, that delivers on the experience that the consumer is expecting. Um, and, you know, we obviously saw that, you know, in the early stages of the market, there was kind of this rush to bathtub gin, so to speak, uh, you know, 100 milligram, you know, candy bars, and people didn't know better and would overconsume that. Um, fortunately, we still have a, a perfect track record. Nobody has died from a cannabis overdose to date. Um, so, you know, there, but there is danger, obviously, psychologically to somebody over consuming cannabis that can be very traumatic for people. And we want to be mindful that we need to kind of really manage that consumer, you know, journey through the category, um, to win them over as a category consumer, not just, you know, have a one and done experience because it got too high. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the race, stuff like the race to the high THC content is at the complete wrong direction for what the consumer is actually going to want to want when they have full choice going state from state. Um, even over in Germany, you're going to see it legalized. And I think you're going to see a lot of North American companies planning that they're going to have Germany all to themselves, whereas we already know of a, a huge amount of European companies who are already going to be putting up a, a fight for market share. I want to move on now to your MJ Unpacked, your consumer packaged goods trade show. You guys did your inaugural event in 2020, if I'm right, just before October, just before COVID kicked in, was it? Um, it was actually 2021. We actually founded the company back at the uh, tail end of 2019, and we raised some capital to fund it in February of 2020. So, um, you know, when I kind of look back at our journey, um, you know, I basically, you know, we, we got the money in just at the buzzer because I don't think anybody would have given us a dime to fund this enterprise um, in March. And the economy shut down. We did do a number of virtual events. Um, and from a trade standpoint, especially for a very tactile industry like cannabis, you want to be able to touch, taste, feel. You need to be able to be in the same room with somebody that you're going to do business with to kind of read their body language and build a level of trust. And and virtual events just don't fit that bill very well for cannabis um, and a lot of other industries. In the tech space, they're great because it's very, you know, kind of technical and, and, and transactional. Uh, but for cannabis, it's very relational and it's important that people get together and kind of, you know, celebrate the, the industry, but also be in the room with the right people. Um, with MJ Unpacked, one of the things that we did different than any other trade show in the United States is we actually qualify every single one of our attendees to make sure that they're a retail or a brand CPG brand company with the title of manager hire. So we're immediately screening to make sure that everybody in the room is a decision maker um, we also know that, you know, one of the big challenges here in the United States is access to capital. And we also allow and accredited investors who are actively investing in cannabis because we're looking for intent and potential, not just somebody that might have a couple hundred shares of Cure Leaf in their E-Trade portfolio, but somebody who could actually write a check, um, you know, until we have access to safe banking and normalize, you know, the financial markets for cannabis, um, you know, it's going to continue to be a choke point for uh, our industry's growth. Yeah, we spoke to the guys Green Check Verified in New York, Peter Sue, and there seems to be a couple of solutions coming for the banking sector just around the corner. And I think that New York industry is going to propel the US industry on uh, by a huge margin. I think even myself, I was over there two weeks ago and the cannabis was prevalent everywhere from the vans on Fifth Avenue to yeah. all of the CB stores selling THC products. I think the consumer tourism over there uh, people are underestimating how many Europeans I think are going to travel to Europe for, or to New York for a cannabis experience. Sure. And uh, well, you can travel to Boston right now for a cannabis experience. It's uh, certainly a little bit closer than New York for traveling across the pond. But, um, you know, it, it's interesting because, um, you know, it, it's 
Uh, on one side, yes, in, in New York, it's kind of this very kind of libertarian kind of mentality, living in a big city like that, that you kind of, as long as they're not infringing on your personal space or rights, then, you know, let them be. And, and I've been, you know, when we did our show in New York just this past May, I mean, people are outside smoking. You can smoke cannabis legally at any place that you're allowed to smoke a cigarette. So restaurants, you know, have outdoor patios. You can go up and light up a joint and go have your meal. Um, you know, and, and I do agree with you that New York, because of its weight and its influence in Washington, might accelerate, um, you know, the the legal, some type of safe banking solution. Um, but, you know, the other, other side of it, when you say it's right around the corner, we've been saying that for almost 10 years now in the cannabis space. Um, unfortunately, and, and um, you know, I, I know that you have a lot of very intelligent, you know, listeners to this. I mean, American politics have become blood sport. Um, we've allowed corporate interests to influence our politics to a, a, a degree and a level that is dangerous for democracy. Um, I hope that someday we repeal the um, Citizens United. Um, we have career politicians that are, you know, it, it's, it's, I was listening to a program the other day that it, on average, like 95% of our senators and representatives will get reelected because it's just, it, there's that much influence for them to be able to beef up their campaign coffers versus a, a non-incumbent thing. And that's that's problematic for democracy. But, um, you know, hopefully we um, this great experiment will figure it out again. Yeah, I hope so. Last thing I wanted to touch on was the uh, MJ brand and insights that you guys do. One of the things that it's probably a pet peeve of mine over in Europe here, the amount of reports that I see that Europe is going to be worth 50 billion. Germany is going to be worth 10 billion. How do you bring real truth and uh, insight and analysis to, to hypothetical markets that may not have happened yet? Do you set parameters for you guys? Because over here, some of the, the companies that do it don't really seem to, it seems to be all one-sided. We're just going to write all the fluffy stuff. Whereas I think it, it has to be more nuanced than that for, for real investors to have a look at. Yeah, absolutely. And so MJ Brand Insights, we actually just rebranded as MJBI. Um, we do have a strategic partnership with a company called BDSA. They are one of the leading analytics firms in the market. Um, and 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 going back to that, I mean, everybody, you know, any publisher or, you know, data an an analyst is going to want to come up with some hyperbolic future number of what the market's going to be. And the bigger that number is, the more likely that they're going to get press coverage on that number, right? So, um, it's, it, it, it's a somewhat of a function of sensationalized news um, that that we've fallen in a trap as opposed to, you know, critical thinking and, you know, pure journalism. Um, you know, it, it, what we're trying to do is, again, is differentiate ourselves from the kind of oversaturated, like, hey, let's post news stories that are basically pulled from news feeds, um, you know, about this, this happening or this company, you know, launching this product, but really kind of, you know, m have more of a conversational approach. Um, we also have a strategic partnership with a company called Pioneer Intelligence. It's really cool what they do. They measure um, consumer activity based on three pillars, social media, website traffic, and earned media. And so they can kind of see which brands are trending up. They're getting more hits on their on their social media posts, on their website, and, and tie that in. And so if somebody from the company is, you know, can look at saying, all right, we ran this marketing promotion. We saw this big uptick. So let's run that again, right? That worked. And if it doesn't happen, it didn't work. Let's do something else. Um, so we, we don't we do not do that type of market analysis. What we do do is we cover, you know, brands that are creating innovation. We look at, you know, um, social equity owned brands, uh, women owned brands. We really try to cover the underrepresented voices in, in this industry. And, you know, while the MSOs in the space get, you know, suck up a lot of oxygen in the news channels, it's real innovation really happens at the kind of small business level. And when, you know, you have a very serial entrepreneur trying to differentiate themselves and those are the stories we want to see get lifted up, get, get attention. Um, you know, going back, I know that, you know, the American market is very nuanced compared to what's going to happen in Europe. Um, but it, at some point in time, there's going to be a moment where we federally legalize cannabis uh, the alcohol and tobacco companies have business plans. They have operational capital set aside. They have some really smart people and they're going to try to steamroll this entire industry. And I think it would be a shame if the cannabis industry lost some of this innovation that happens at the grassroots level. And more importantly, is that we lost control of the thought leadership of cannabis because we deserve a better industry that's more compassionate. This is medicine. This isn't an intoxicant and uh, really help help support the growth of the industry. 
So when Europe legalizes, is there a brand in North America, Canada, or uh, the USA that you think has the best chance of make, getting in Europe? Um, I would say not necessarily. I think that the largest brand in the world uh, might not yet have been invented. Um, there's certainly some powerhouses here in the U.S., um, like we had talked about before, the Cookies, Curly, Select, Tawana brands um, that, that have some potential. But, um, you know, I think the European market is going to be very unique. And I think that European brands are going to have the opportunity to really own that market. Yeah, I couldn't agree. It's it's very nuanced over here when you actually get over here and the, the, the ability to be able to penetrate the whole of Europe with one brand and one narrative and one message is yeah. a little bit of a misplaced idea, I think. Yeah. Yep, we've got. I mean, we've got all these bifurcated state markets here. I mean, in Europe, you know, you, you know, regardless of the EU, you do have very, you know, unique cultural kind of nuances to this. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, very much so. Can't thank you enough for taking your time to talk to us. It's been very much appreciated. Anybody wants to check out more about Jade Media, it is just on the link as below. It'll be connected to the link in each platform that you're watching on now. So, thank you very much for taking your time, today, George. Thanks so much, Owen. Really appreciate your time. Hopefully we get to chat again in the near future and get an update of everything that's happened. Let's do it. Thanks, guys. See you next episode.